Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Jason from PFAM5 and I'm here with Jet. We're back for another daily reading. We started a new series where it's through the Bible in 60 days. It's like a summary of the Bible and it's a great way to get your kids plugged in and, and start reading the Bible and it kind of gives you a taste of the Bible. So real quick, if you want to find this plan or plans like it that you can read along with your own uh, children, uh, go to questionsgod.com. Again, that's questionsgod.com, and that's a cool website. You can find all sorts of different plans. Or, of course, you can follow along with us, and there, well, we, we have a playlist created on our channel. So we're going to continue reading. Like I said, this, this, this kind of jumps around, so it's not always going to pick up exactly where we left off before. It may skip ahead, but it's going to go in order of the story of the Bible and just give you a good overview of the Bible. So today, though, we're actually going to read three chapters, Genesis 6, 7, and 8. So this is one of the longer days. Not every day is like that. Some days are short. Some days you read like 20 verses and that's it. We're going to read in the New International Version. I'm going to read the first two chapters, chapters 6 and 7, and then... This smart guy is going to read ch chapter 8, right? Yes. Okay. Let's get started. Wickedness in the world. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be... 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created. And with them, the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah in the flood. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch in, inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof and opening one cubit high all around. Put a door inside of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you and be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Chapter 7 The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came on the earth. 
And Noah and his sons and wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark, as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than fifteen cubits. Every living thing that moved on the land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. Chapter 8, guys. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had gone down. And on the seventeenth day of the seventeenth month, the ark came to the rest on the mountain of Arat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried it up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground, but the dove could not find anywhere to perch because there was water over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah and the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. His, he waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly put, uh, plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the month, of no six hundredth and first year. The water had dried up from the earth. N Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. But the twenty seventh day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wives and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and wife and his sons' wives 
all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the land, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and he said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground bees of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, and never again I, will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Guys, that was Genesis chapter 6, 7, and 8. Lots of reading today. We hope you'll come back again tomorrow as we continue a journey through the Bible in 60 days. Again, get your kids involved. Join us on a daily basis. And don't worry about if you don't get if you if you fall behind, just pick right back up and these videos will always be here. So, again, God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.